Hello, guys. Let's talk about atoms today. So, Greek philosophers such as Lysippus and Democritus, already in the 5th century BC, believed that the whole universe is composed of uncuttable particles and they named them atomos. So, for example, they believed that if we have cheese, Cheese is composed of teeny, teeny, tiny cheese particles, and these che uh, cheese particles going to have the same properties as a large cheese. So they are squishy and yummy. Okay, that's quite interesting, and it kind of makes sense, right? If you don't have a microscope to look at things, but we had to wait quite long until the 18th century for new discoveries to come up. So the law of constant composition, sometimes also called the Proust law or the law of definite propor proportions was formulated by Proust in 1779. And he said that a compound is always composed of the same proportion of elements by mass. So this basically means that if you have uh, a compound, in this compound, the relative number of atoms of each element is the same in any sample. Okay, so if, for example, if we have H2O, which is water, it's going to contain always two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, no matter where you are. It's always going to contain that. Okay, now, later, the law of conservation of mass came along, and uh, Lavoisier discovered in 1789. So it states that the mass of an element at the beginning of a reaction will equal to the mass of an element at the end of the reaction. So this means that mass cannot be created nor destroyed in chemical reactions. Okay, so now I have a question for you. When are you the lightest? What time of the day are you the lightest? Probably in the morning, right? Why? Well, you probably ate in the evening and then you slept and then you wake up, you weigh yourself and you see that you are lighter uh, compared to when you went to bed. Well, obviously there, might, there are several reasons why you are lighter, but one of the reasons is actually your uh, body was working. Okay, so when we breathe, we breathe in oxygen and using this oxygen, O2, we are actually uh, producing energy for our body to function. But along with that, we actually make byproducts such as water, right? So we are breathing in and we breathe out carbon dioxide, CO2. Do you see the difference? So when you are breathing in, you are breathing in two oxygen atoms, right? An oxygen molecule, and you are breathing out more of carbon dioxide, CO2, which has an extra carbon atom. Okay, so this doesn't amount to a lot, but if you are sleeping about eight hours and you are an average sized person, it can amount to up to 100 grams of weight loss just because you are breathing out an extra carbon atom with oxygen atoms. It's quite crazy. So I'm linking below a video uh, from Veritasium that covers this topic. I really enjoyed watching it. I suggest you check it out. Okay, so the next law is the law of multiple proportions uh, that was discovered by John Dalton, okay? He was working on his atomic theory. So he postulated that when two elements, A and B, form more than one compound between them, then the ratios of the masses of B, which combined with a fixed mass of A, will always be ratios of small whole numbers. Okay, let's try to understand what does this mean. 
let's say that I have two atoms. My atom A is going to be a carbon atom, and my atom B is going to be an oxygen atom. If I combine 100 grams of carbon atoms, these little uh, black balls here, with 133 grams of oxygen atoms, and those are the red spheres, I'm going to arrive to carbon monoxide, CO. So one carbon atom and one oxygen atom connected together to form carbon monoxide. But then I can combine 100 grams of carbon. So see, we have the same mass in both cases. But this time, I doubled the mass of my oxygen atoms. So from 133 grams, I went to 266 grams. And in this case, I've got carbon dioxide. And do you see the difference between the two molecules? In carbon monoxide, I have one carbon atom and one oxygen atom. In carbon dioxide, I have one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. So he came up with this law when he was working on his atomic theory. So his atomic theory actually was published in 1808 over 200 years ago only, right? So if you think about it, Greek philosophers talked about atoms uh, many, many years ago, 500 BC, and then we needed to get to 1808 to actually talk about atoms again. So Dalton's atomic theory postulates that everything is composed of indivisible building blocks of matter and they are called atoms and they cannot be destroyed by chemical means. He also said that all atoms of a given element are identical with the same properties, but atoms of one element are different from the atoms of all other elements. His third postulate is that atoms cannot be created or destroyed by chemical means. An atom of one element cannot be converted into an atom of another element by chemical reactions. And compounds are formed when atoms of more than one element are combined. And the given compound will always have the same relative number and kind of atoms. Okay. So in 1808, was he right? Well, some parts of his theory are correct, but the majority is unfortunately incorrect. But it was a huge step forward for us to understand the world around us, right? Because we actually came to believe that atoms, indivisible particles, exist. Okay, so atoms are actually not indivisible. Dalton was right that atoms take part in chemical reactions. However, not all atoms of a given element are identical. and We are going to get into it. And there are some rare cases when atoms of one element are the same as the atoms of other elements in their some of their properties not all of their properties but based on their mass so there are quite some inaccuracies in his theory but it was still a huge step forward i hope this makes sense see you in the next video where we will cover more on atoms